celebrate what Jesus is doing throughout the nation and rise up to answer His call on your life. To serve the poor, heal the broken, free the captives, and bring joy to those in need. Find hope, encouragement, and motivation through Overcomers TV. This inspiring network features everyday people and ministries across America who are putting God's love in action. Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Christian Legal Society, episode number six with Lakita Biddle. Esquire. What's going on? Esquire. Esquire. Let's put some respect on it. Put some respect on it. <laughs> I right. work hard for that, Esquire. That's right. Christian Legal Society. We're so excited that uh, we can talk about things that are amazingly important. Contact information, Christian Legal Aid, the phone number there, the email, and the website. And we got uh, just a, a great show planned for you today. And uh, what we record on Fridays does, you know, rebroadcast on Saturdays at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 a.m. on the Pacific time for California, Washington folks. How you doing this morning, sister? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Pastor Chuck? I'm doing great. I love our time together. We get into the Bible and uh, super excited. God put a verse on your heart that I've been talking about almost all week. Um, what does God wow. require? That's the question. That's that's what everybody wants to know. What does God require of me? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you one thing. He requires Micah 6, 8. Micah 6, 8. <laughs> that's yes. the answer. All the answers in the Bible I heard. The Bible answer, man? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, but they're all the answers are in the book. You got to get in there. So Micah 6, 8. I was also yeah. born in 1968. We'll tell you how old I am. But uh, mm. God used numbers to get my attention uh, just to keep reading the Bible because I was a lady, lazy reader. But all my favorite numbers would show up like 2, 3 for February 3rd or 6, 8. Mm -hmm. He has shown you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. I thought I zoomed in on that, but that's the verse right there. So talk that's about it. that. What does that mean to you and your organization? Well, you know, Micah 6, 8 is the foundational scripture for our organization. We are a legal organization. And as lawyers, we encounter justice every day, all day, probably more than the average person, right? Like the whole system is called the justice system. And um, especially, you know, in the uh, judicial branch. And so, you know, we, we're trying to do God's justice and what is required of us by serving the poor. We're trying to do God's justice by representing people um, through our referral directory. We're just really trying to do um, the work of the Lord. And, you know, justice is such a complex word, but yet so simple. We see it in so many different areas of our culture, um, people distorting the word justice, um, people wanting justice, people using the word justice uh, on a regular basis. You'll see social justice, restorative justice, biblical justice. I mean, wow. er, racial justice. Yeah, I never thought Everybody. of that before. Yeah, you just got a laundry list going there. And I'm like, yep, yep, yep. Wow. Yeah, everybody puts something in injustice. But, you know, because some, to some people's definition, it means to get what I want. That would be justice because yes. I want this is what I want versus what's good for everybody. I mean, what is the what is the definition of justice? So you dig into um, if you have a strong concordance, but we, we got to go to church real quick. <laughs> <laughs> dig into the word justice, Sadiq or Mashpit, Mishpat. I guess that's how you would say it. Um, the definition of justice is really just seeing things from God's perspective. Right. Um so if you think about justice, I, some synonyms would be equity, not equality, equity, mm -hmm. equity or doing what's right. right. Um, and there's a, you know, I guess if you think about it from God's perspective, it's really it really is being impartial, just being completely impartial um, and doing what's just and doing what's right. And God is impartial. Right. Think about it. He created so many of us so many different ways. Mm -hmm. 
um, with so many different gifts and talents, right. so many different skin colors, so many different regions, continents that we live in, so many different planets. You know, there's so, so many different facets of God um, that if he just saw things from one perspective, it would be problematic, right? So seeing things from God's perspective, um, what's righteous, what's justice, what's right, um, that's really what justice means. Yeah. And, um, and when we talk, you know, th- thanks for sharing that because, um, you know, we're a bunch of Gentiles reading a Jewish book <laughs> that has a lot of Jewish history and the law. And I, I've always heard that, you know, here's what two, three million uh, Israelites leaving Egypt, which was a had laws and ordinances and rules, and now they're in the middle of the wilderness with, with two, three million people without law, structure, boundaries, guidelines would be chaos. So, law and order, you always see those two words together. But mm-hmm. then you have the Levitical law through Leviticus, which had dietary, ceremonial, bulls, pigeons, you know, sacrifices. And then sexually moral laws like incest and, you know, things mm-hmm. like that and sleeping, mating with animals and male with male, female with female. You know, so God defines what sexual morality is through the law. But over the years, then grace came. Jesus came, grafted Gentiles are being saved. And of course, in the law is always circumcision, which was a sign for the Jewish people. And now we, a bunch of Gentiles, are confused. What? part of this old testament do i have to do and that this is begs the question what does god require me i mean i went to red lobster last night i had shrimp scampi snow crab and a lobster tail you know but in the levitical law it's like don't eat shellfish or even you know pig or swine or ham and man you know we have so anyway we going to work <laughs> but you know so in our church and as a pastor you know there's the debates that happen mm-hmm. in acts 15 mm-hmm. You know, they had a big debate. The Gentiles were getting saved, received the Holy Spirit. All the apostles got together and said, hey, listen, don't eat foods offered to idols. Don't eat the blood and keep yourself from sexual immorality. If you do this, you're doing well. That would have been a great time for them to start adding in all those other laws that Gentiles were supposed to keep. But so, yeah, and my buddy would do this. And I'll let you talk after this. He said, but God doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I said, first of all, it's Hebrews 13, 8. It's true God doesn't change, but the verse is Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. But what God required over time has changed. What he used to require, the blood of bulls, now the blood of his son has replaced that. So now he requires faith in his son, Jesus. So he hasn't changed, but what God requires changes. Is that, is that a fair and accurate statement? I like the way you broke that down because, and I'm getting an echo for some reason, but I like the way you broke that down. A little too high on your laptop or your speaker. Uh, I'll put my pretty mine down too. Cause yeah. All right. There we go. Um, I like the way you broke that down though, because our culture is constantly changing. Right. And so God, his principles are the same. God is the same. But the way we look at things that's happening in our world or in the global world, we have to look at it from God's perspective or we're going to think that we have to do the exact same thing. Um, Just like you said, with keeping the laws of eating and, um, you know, all of the things that you mentioned about your red lobster. (laughs) (laughs) It was date night last night, man. We had a good time. I had the ultimate feast. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how you're able to be awake this morning after eating all of that. That's that's pretty. That's I know fine. that butter's not good for me. I mean, again, ultimately, and I'll just say this: Romans seven twelve, which is a yeah. New Testament verse, says the law is holy, it's just, mm-hmm. and it's good. So you yeah. can't you can't throw out the baby in the bathwater. We learn what sin is. What sin is? It's healthier lifestyles. You'll live longer, less problems. You know. So I would always say, if there's a Bible verse that you can read and try to do it, you'll probably be better off for it. But when it comes to being justified by faith and being right with God and salvation, that's, you know, so those are, that's how I kind of differentiate. I still think doing, being a mm-hmm. doer of the word, trying to do it, you'll be better off, but I'm just not there. Getting up we, ham and ham and shellfish. <laughs> <laughs> Keep eating your ham and shellfish in mo- moderation. And go to the gym, work it off, you know. <laughs> but, 
Oh, Lord. But, yeah. Let's not talk about that. But let's get back um, to what you guys do. <laughs> I mean, it just, just you're helping people get justice. Yes, we are helping people get justice. We help in a number of ways, right? We are helping through our Christian legal aid clinics, um, which are all throughout the nation. It's the way we serve the poor, the needy, the least of these. Um, I'm actually serving on Saturday. I'm super excited. Um, the marginalized in our community, people who are facing evictions or divorces or, um, you know, wanting to get their records expunged or trying to start their small business or their nonprofit issues in the church. Like there's so many different things that our clinics do to help um, that we are really doing justice. Oh, I like that. Justice to the fatherless and the oppressed. Yeah. Yes. And a lot of people are facing oppression, um, particularly those who come to our legal aid clinics. And it's, it's really tough out here, especially you think about the holidays. Yeah. There's all this pressure. Kids are out of school. Um, there's a lot of pressure to be able to give people gifts for Christmas or just to even have food, heat, you know, yeah. clothing for the winter time. So mm -hmm. our Christian legal aid clinics do that. I love that. <clears throat> it says help, support, advice, and guidance. I mean, for mm -hmm. free, and we might as well add for free, because that stuff, you know, there's counselors and all kinds of places you can go that charge big bucks for that kind of yeah. support, right? Yes. And a worker is worthy of his wages, but you guys are a nonprofit. There's Christians who donate to this organization to help fund what it takes to run a business, including salary. So, but that's yeah. why, you know, it's charitable giving as far as us Christians are concerned. And I might just add a little plug for you guys. It's year end. And if anybody's looking for year end giving, this is going to be a great organization to give. So you guys can start strong in the black and not in the red. We talked about that on Black Friday, right? Getting out of the red into the black. From deficit yes, to out of the red into the black. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes. So you can definitely give. It is year end. Um, and you can give. Go ahead and get your tax deductible donation. Um, so you can put it on your itemized deductions um, to be able to give to Christian Legal Society. You can go on our website. You can give us a call at 703-642-1070, um, or you can go on our website and just click where it says donate on the top right-hand side. There it is. Um, yeah, big green button. Green as in cha-ching. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> and help is in red because we all need some help. That's awesome. Yes. Yes, help is in red. Look so yeah, that. if you I need help, over donate, and my wallet came up. Man, the computer even makes it easy for you. It's like, which credit card do you want to use? We got a wallet. Uh oh, that's good. That's pretty fancy. And you know, well, another thing we want to talk about too is your magazine. You got a media library. We got our podcast. We got journals, magazine. I know you wanted to talk about that a little bit today. The Christian Lawyer Magazine. Yeah, we were talking about uh, justice. We um, every year, twice a year, actually, I get a chance to compile a group of authors to speak on a particular subject matter. Just pray about what is it that the Lord wants us to share with Christian lawyers and the Christian community to encourage them and to equip for the work of the ministry. So uh, one of the magazines that I did, actually my first magazine that I did was on doing justice because justice is, that's my passion. Yep. One of these days you're going to see me with a husband and some kids, Pastor Chuck. And, and you won't even have to ask what my kid's name is. His name or her name is going to be Justice. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that name. And I know you got some great pastors that have been in your life, but I want to throw yeah. my name in the hat for the one who officiate the, the wedding. You know, so ah. just saying, I'll do it for free too. I'm pro bono. I, I've learned the word pro bono from you guys. <laughs> pro bono, yes. For free. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That reminds me of the movie Sam I Am uh, with Sean Penn. And uh, uh -huh. I think it was, uh, what was her name? Michelle Pfeiffer. She was a lawyer. And um, Sean Penn was like an autistic guy who worked at Starbucks and oh, wow. had a baby. It's a great that. movie. I Am Sam, mm -hmm. I think it was called. I Am Sam. I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah. And uh, anyway, he was, yeah, he had a child and. He was unfit because he wasn't mentally, you know, above eight. Yeah. And Michelle Fiverr plays a lawyer to work pro bono for him. And she normally didn't What's do pro bono job? work, but in front of all her peers, she was kind of like, oh, yeah, I'll take the case. It was an amazing hmm. story. So that might be a good story to watch. But Wow. But yeah, it yeah, changed her heart doing funny. some pro bono work. It totally changed her life, changed her heart. I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that. 
you know, because Chris lawyers get a bad rap, and that's why I love this show because there's a joke, um, and I'll give you the joke after, but you know, uh, about lawyers not making it to heaven because they lie for a living, right? I mean, that's they always they're always the pun of the joke um, about them getting into heaven, you know. Um, well, I'm securing my seat. I'll turn in my lawyer hat to get in heaven. <laughs> But you can do your job and be just and do and with integrity, <laughs> yes, you right? With integrity. That's yes, the word. You, can. you don't have to compromise in any way. You know, and that's the one thing I like about um, Christian Legal Society, being around other Christian lawyers who are, you know, trying to walk in integrity, who are walking in integrity, who are really seeking the Lord's life um, and purpose and being obedient and walking out his will. I really appreciate that because, you know, it does get really lo lonely in the practice of law. You do think you're the only one trying to do the right thing. It is very few far in between because people are very deceptive, corrupt, um, self-seeking, um, just so many different things that you see across the aisle. I'll say across the aisle because I was on the prosecutor side. So right, right. that's a different <laughs> aisle, defense and prosecutor, right? Yeah. And yeah. I know you want to be a judge. And I was thinking about that this morning. We talked about that on one of our you conversations. Be a judge. You'd be a great judge. <laughs> the Lord, if the Lord, okay, I'll, I'll receive that because it's, it's the Lord's will, but I'm not seeking. I'm going to tell you that right now, because sitting on that bench is no joke. And I'll take that lightly at all, but the practice of law is nothing to take lightly either. It's really, um, you know, just really having compassion. I think you talked about a little bit earlier about um, working with um, the clinics pro bono, right. how the Lord just moves on our hearts as lawyers. Like, it's interesting because I remember when I was practicing, because, you know, obviously I'm not actively practicing right now because I work at Christian Legal Society. But when I was practicing up until 2021, one of the things that I noticed is that People often forget, or well, let's be more specific, lawyers often forget that we are working with real people. Like it's not a piece of paper. It's not a defendant. It's not, it's not any of those things. It is a real person that God created in his image yeah. and his likeness. Yeah. And I love to throw in that Jesus, the advocate for us, mm -hmm. our propitiation for us, saying that word advocate is the similar word, word that we use for lawyers, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we call ourselves advocates. People call us advocates. We are advocating for justice, you know. Um, so, yeah, God will change your heart in the work that you do if you allow him to. I love working um, with our Christian Legal Aid Clinics, though I don't have enough time to do it as much as I want. Um, I do get a chance to do it several times a year, and I really enjoy it because it keeps you humble, helps you remember, like, man, Lord, to much is given, much is required. Like you've given me this law license to help someone else and you just want to give and give and you're just moved with compassion by their situations that you could easily be a part of or be in yourself. Um, and then you're moved with compassion to try to help them to get justice because um, they're just at such a place of, um, I would say, hopelessness a lot of times. Um, and we come and bring them hope, the Christ, yeah. right, that's in us the hope of glory. So, yeah. um, so I appreciate good. that. I, I think yeah. there's, a, there's a phrase and it's, I'm, I might be misquoting it, but by the grace of God, there go by, there go I. Right. So mm. I mean, again, we're yeah. all, I mean, things happen. Life is messy. Like we live in a sinful world. Uh, we make simple choices and then people sin against us and steal from us and find ourselves in some precarious situations. But you're right. I mean, it could be spiritually, physically, emotionally bankrupt. We had a couple of homeless guys come into our celebrate recovery but all they had great faith, but just between COVID, losing their job, losing their family, being on the street for three months, you start looking like street mm. folk and people avoid you, don't look at you, don't want to engage, they're scared of you. And he's like, people look at me weird. And he started crying and he goes, I know I made some mistakes. I'm sorry, but I don't, he didn't feel loved. And man, we just all started crying because man, you know, it's so easy to avoid somebody that needy. Is like, what can I yeah. do to help? But just a smile. Hey, I'm praying for you. What's your name? You can't ignore these folks. Just that conversation that, hey, I'm with you. I'm praying for you. Let's talk about it. Someone to talk to, being a good listener. I mean, these are things you don't need to be. You don't need to pass your, the bar to do those things, right? So true. And, you know, it's interesting that you said that because the homeless guy or the guy who found himself homeless, um, I think that a lot of times, even in the body of Christ, we look at individuals 
we look down on individuals as though they're less than, but God doesn't see them any less than based on their circumstances, right? He didn't see the woman at the well as less than because she had five husbands and the one she was with wasn't hers. He didn't see the leprosy, you know, as the, you know, the leprous men as less than. He didn't see anybody as less than. And a lot of times we look at the outward appearance of a person or the things that we see outwardly about the persons and we forget like this is that's where we get the word prejudice. It's prejudging. You say prejudice, you forget if you break down the word what that means. You're you're making a judgment without real information, I guess enough information. That's what I love about yeah. the court of law too. Both sides get to cross examine, ask the right questions to get to the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. And even Abraham back in Genesis, when he told everyone that Sarah was his sister, that was true, but it was a half truth. Because normally you didn't marry half sisters. Um, so they thought, oh, sister, then she's not his wife. And that led them to a deceptive conclusion when he should have said the whole truth is she's my sister, but she's also my wife. And then, you know, she wouldn't have been in those situations where they're trying to because she was beautiful. They, other men thought she was available. And next thing you know, they would have been committing adultery because Abraham didn't step up and tell the whole truth. You could probably preach from that huh, all day long. Yeah. Exactly. I think that um, the pre prejudice or prejudging goes a lot with Micah 6, 8 justice, right? Because a lot of times, you know, when we have differences with other people, you can prejudge them because you're not in the same situation as them. And that's why the world is really crying out for justice, because we don't see one another the way God sees one another in a lot of ways. There's so many Oh, so many different issues. Like even this week, I was thinking about this case that happened and how the jury came back with a verdict. And I was just so disappointed because I'm like, right. is that really justice? Is it justice for the victim's family? Is it really justice for the accused? Is it justice for what's happening in our society? Um, you know, justice, the Lord, well, let me just say this. In Proverbs chapter 11, there's a scripture where um, it talks about the Lord detests dishonest scales. Yeah, right. But accurate weights find favor in him. And what we're dealing with is a society who does not ab abide by the laws of God, the principles of God. Right. And so we see dishonest scales all over the place. Right. So the scales of justice, a lot of times, are dishonest. They're imbalanced. Right. They right. weigh in favor of this side right. or the other side. And people understand and that's what not that meant because in the marketplace, they would buy like... Mm -hmm. incense or, or spices or meat you go to the deli and you buy a pound of ham and if his if his you know scale is not calibrated you think you're buying a pound of ham and maybe it was three quarters of a pound you're getting ripped off that's really at the end of the day uh, it, that means ripped off right uh -huh. yep yeah yep 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 and that's that's so across the board honesty integrity and again it should be balanced um and even the media, and that's a whole nother show, but the media, I mean, some will claim to be fair and balanced because they'll have somebody on both sides when, you know, uh, the reporter or, you know, journalism, so to speak, uh, is not biased, like a judge is not supposed to be biased. But again, hear both sides and let mm -hmm. the people decide, the jury, right? Or in this case, public opinion. But, you know, even our media sources right now are not balanced. And that's why depending on what you listen to, you could start being persuaded and you could be off balance and not even know it. I don't even want to talk about that a little bit. Oh my God. We can be off balance. We can be off balance because of the, think about our experiences in life. And I have to do this a lot in the legal profession. Did you know that less than 5% of all lawyers are African-American? Wow. Less than 5%. I have to find myself really seeking the Lord about why things happen the way they do and why I may be treated a particular way. Wow. Is it because of the color of my skin? Is it because I'm a woman? Because there's a whole right. lot more men. Right. I think it's like 60% men in the profession right. as opposed to women. Right. And so I'm like checking my spirit constantly like, Lord, 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 mm -hmm. what is this? Because, you know, and so our personal, um, you know, experiences in life uh, 
whether it's from a race background or from a gender background or because we're Christian, um, it can influence how we see things, how we perceive things and how we respond to things. And so without Holy Spirit, I'm going to tell you, I will respond in my flesh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we will be walking right out of church with our hands raised high, singing praise songs and praise the Lord, high five and in five minutes in the parking lot. Be ready to run somebody over. You know, I mean, it's that flesh yeah, like a light switch. Throw hands, throw hands. <laughs> There's a saying in the I church, I'm going to lay hands and then pray later. You know, instead of laying hands on them and praying for them, I'll lay hands on them and pray later. I'm about to lay my holy hands <laughs> on you. <laughs> yeah. Man. It ain't easy being yeah. a Christian. I'll just, let's just end with that. I know we got about four and a half minutes because we try to keep the show at 30 minutes so it sticks in our schedule okay. on broadcast but um, yeah. yeah I mean and that's what we're trying to do Christian it's a high bar and we're trying to help people we're raising the bar love grace mercy you know uh, and I think I'm thinking of another verse where God it says mercy triumphs over judgment in the Bible yes yes yeah, we need mercy. Oh, trust me, we need mercy for sure. I'm gonna have to steal that though, Pastor Chuck. Um, because you know, when when you become a lawyer, uh, they call it passing the bar. Yeah. Um, because you sit for a bar examination. Right, right. And, and so we're gonna be Christian lawyers raising the bar. That's, I like well, that. That's good. That's all good. You gotta have those punny jokes in the industry. <laughs> Oh my God! Raising, you know, raising the, bar. the bar, absolutely. You can, man. You can. You guys should start brand marking, trademarking that, and everything. Get it on the website instead of instead of sitting at the bar. You know, yeah. a lot of lawyers, <laughs> a lot of lawyers sitting at the bar. <laughs> that, that plays out a lot of different ways. That's cool. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, no, we are raising the bar at Christian Legal Society. Um, the one thing I did want to say earlier about the magazine was um, the edition on doing justice really breaks down the word justice and seeing things from God's perspective um, with the word justice and what all that entails. It's I think it's so vital in 2023, especially um, post, I guess, post pandemic, post culture wars, all that stuff. Um, it's important to see things from God's perspective a lot of times. Um, Unfortunately, some lawyers have a more privileged background. I didn't have the advantage of that right. um, because, you know, my parents uh, were lower income status and they didn't go to uh, law school. So, um, but some lawyers you do are, come. Hey. From, hey, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> that's my article right there. You know, I've been pushed into a whole different, we won't even go down that path, but writing a little more and i I'm, I'm enjoying sharing the heart of god through my writing that's me lakita bittle that's awesome for now yeah middle for now pastor chuck you gotta get to praying i don't know what you're doing but if you want to you want to officiate you got to get to praying for the man of god <laughs> all right that leaves me 55 seconds but I always say this you don't have to pray now but pray later I, yeah i say this the triangle if you're he and she, if you're at the bottom, going towards mm -hmm. God, he's going towards God. Next thing you're going to yep. look over and say, hey, he's kind of cute. And you both are going to be seeking God. And as you seek God together, you're going to draw closer together. And God, will, that's how God shows you who your that one is. So sometimes I, I know I made a lot of decisions just using my eyeballs because guys are visual. And uh, yeah. they just crash and burn, crash and burn, crash and burn. But yeah, I'm God not interested in that. a ministry-minded <laughs> woman in my life. That I also thought was pretty, and you know, all of that, all that, and the bag of chips, you'll know. So, God's got to pick it's about God's purpose God. for sure. Yeah. yeah, it has to be, it has to be God centered. So, trust me, I'm not rushing, but I'm just saying, I just wanted yeah. to put that little plug bug in your ear. And I'll just say this based on what I know of you, I think you're ready, he's not. So, God's still working on no, him, he's in the shop no, right no, now, work being worked on. And when mm -hmm. it's off the, you know, like when the car gets off the assembly line and it's ready for sale. He'll be ready. But right now, if you saw him, he'd blow it because he ain't got it all together yet. I'm just saying that. Mm -hmm. Timing, God's mm -hmm. timing is always perfect. That's the end of it. You just got yes, God's timing is perfect. God is perfect. And I'm grateful for that. And I'm just doing the work of the Lord in the meantime and I'm, and even afterwards, you know. Amen. Um, but I just wanted to, you know, wrap that up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You don't know who's going to see this broadcast. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let's pray. You can lead us. All right, let's definitely. God, thank you that you are the God of justice. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Thank you that 
you require this from us, Lord God, and help us to fulfill your requirements, Lord. Help us to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Lord, we thank you that we'll continue to seek justice as Christian lawyers, as Christians, um, those in the profession, Lord God, those in the body of Christ, that we will see people and see situations the way that you see it with your perspective, Lord God. Um, and we just honor you for what you're doing in our lives. And we thank you for this conversation and pray that those who hear this broadcast will be ministered and blessed. Um, and they'll remember to serve the poor and um, defend the oppressed and the fatherless and to do justice, Lord God. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, thanks for time with Lakita. And we do pray for that man. We know that you've been in matchmaking since Adam and Eve. And uh, <laughs> we know God, what, what man, oh, God has joined together, let no man separate. So we do pray for our future spouses and our children. And again, all the desires you put on her heart and every lawyer that said, here I am, Lord, send me, that they would go in with grace and mercy and, and be an advocate for justice. Again, when we stand up against evil and those that are corrupt, God, we know truth always wins. So help us speak the truth in love and be that advocate like you are for us. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. And uh, I just want to say one thing before we close, too, that uh, our show is on Overcomers TV Live. And if this episode and any other previous episodes um, will be right there under TV. You can go on. And the audio from all these are made of podcasts from I Apple iPod, Podcast, iHeart, Google, Spotify, your favorite podcast platform. Check out Christian Legal Society Overcomers TV. Yes, check us out. Yeah, and Mike Lindell is one of our uh, major sponsors for our show. And uh, he stands up for what he thinks is truth. And obviously uh, the whole election fraud, you know, hacking, you know, just fair and balanced elections. What, whatever side you're on, I think we all agree. We want to make sure our votes count. They count right. And he's all in on that. But anyway, he's an overcomer through drugs and alcohol, through Jesus, sold out for the Lord and sold out for truth. And uh, he's got some my coffee. I just saw you took a sip. But um, I, I meant to send you this. You're going to get some my coffee. But he, Here's the commercial oh, okay. on that. Awesome, girl. My coffee. Fist bump out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm Mike Lindell, and I'm excited to announce my new product, My Coffee. It's the best tasting coffee ever. It starts with the beans that are grown in Honduras, which has the perfect climate for growing coffee plants, producing the best beans ever. Each batch is tested to meet the very highest industry standards and all the production's done right here in the USA. You get them ground whole bean or in single serve coffee pods, plus it's certified organic and non-GMO. It's like you're getting that small batch specialty coffee delivered monthly right to your front door. So go to mystore.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to save 50% on your My Coffee subscription. Not only that, when you sign up today, you're going to get a Go Anywhere My Pillow absolutely free. You can cancel anytime and keep the Go Anywhere My Pillow as my gift to you. Thanks for supporting my new platform for USA entrepreneurs, mystore.com.